Thank you, Josh. As we begin, I want to just open with a couple of words for our service. Of course, we can see the people who are worshiping with us online this time. Usually we can't see you, but we do have a TV set up on the side where uh, we can actually watch uh, from the St. Methodius Center. So it's like you're right here uh, with us. You can't see a lot of the people, but if we were to turn the camera around a little bit, you would see a, a, a whole crowd of us seated uh, on couches and soft chairs around. It looks like a living room in here. Oh, and I think David is going to show you everybody. There we go. There we go. There's our room. Here, and there, everybody's waving at you. There you go. <laughs> yes, there's, the kids all the way in the back are shouting at you if you can't hear them. All right, all right. Now we all know each other. <clears throat> oh, that was fun. Are you dizzy yet? <laughs> They're not here to watch themselves on their own TV through the, the closed loop of feedback. Yeah, I can come back now. <clears throat> So for our worship today, for the people online, you should have the uh, booklet in the PDF form. Uh, people here, it looks like everybody's got their printed out booklets. And if you didn't, I also see most people seem to have the green wonder, love, and praise books as well that were given to us from Faith Episcopal Church in Merrimack. Uh, and we have those for our use from now on. Uh, also... Um, Let's see, uh, let's see, everyone's packed up all their things and is ready to go? All right, no, sort of, linens maybe, all right. So we'll have a chance after our worship to finish packing our things, putting our linens out at the door the way they've asked us to. Uh, for those who are online, you can, one thing you may have missed uh, is the uh, setup for coffee hour. We have a coffee hour set up right here. Uh, so after we have Eucharist, we can eat. And then we have lunch uh, in the dining hall, so we can immediately just walk up the road and get more to eat if you were not already stuffed with waffles from breakfast. I know, I kind of just need to take a deep breath and think about the food. But we have our worship service here. We'll begin with the hymn, uh, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, uh, a familiar one for us. So let's stand up as we sing together, and we're excited to have Josh to play for us. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In our green books, page uh, 838 is our Kyrie. 838. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading from Exodus. Whoever's reading from Exodus, come up to the microphone so people online can hear you. From the wilderness of sin, the whole contagration of the Israelites journeyed by stages. As the Lord commanded, they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for there for water, and the people complained about Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people. Then take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand to the staff which... You struck with Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Harob. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place of Mas Masa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Kiva. Who is leading us in Psalm 95? All right, Grace, come up here. No, we're going to start doing this at church every Sunday. Whoever's coming up, you've got you to have some walk-on music. You've got to cheer for them. Now yeah. we got to hire it again. <clears throat> Too much. Okay, that, that, that's better. Okay. Uh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout, shout for joy to, to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before, before the Lord, Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not, you, yeah. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness. At Meribah, and on that day at Asa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. 
40 years long, I detested th that generation and said, This people no are wayward, wayward in their hearts. No so I swore in my wrath. They, they shall not enter into, into my rest. All right, Erica's coming up for Romans reading. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that, we were, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, that will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now seen reconciliation. The, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I believe, and we together pray. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. And set God's people free. And set God's people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. Believe and I believe, and we together pray. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free, and set God's people free, and set God's people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had, been, had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give 
will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to her, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will not worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. The disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do, not, do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may, enjoy, may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor." Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. For those who have been with us on the retreat since Friday night, how many times have we read this passage now? It's been five or six times, yeah. <clears throat> we've heard about the woman and the conversation, and we've uh, prayed and poured the, over the details together. Uh, it's a long reading, so those who are uh, joining us online are hearing it maybe for the first time in a while. And we remember that last Sunday, we actually had that conversation uh, with Nicodemus, the rabbi who came to Jesus by night and was Act, uh, was asking him questions about how can someone be born again, uh, how, what is this about the spirit and the water and the wind and all of these kinds of questions. And in some ways, um, Nicodemus, the, the rabbi who had religious training, uh, didn't seem to get it. 
uh, he seemed a little bit more hard to understand than the woman was. Um, one scholar I was spending time with this week noted that the woman at the well actually has a much more theological conversation <laughs> uh, with him, with Jesus, than the rabbi did, because uh, the rabbi keeps kind of butting up against this wall of not understanding. And there's all of this conversation back and forth with the woman and the living water, and she actually gets to the conclusion before the rabbi that Jesus is the Messiah. She gets to that point of saying, you are a prophet, you are the Messiah. Uh, she goes and tells all the people in the village, and they, they all get right away. They come back and say, oh, here's the Savior. So she is um, able to have perhaps a conversation with Jesus that Jesus enjoyed a little more than the one that he had with Nicodemus last Sunday. And we also, throughout this weekend, we're reading some other passages of Scripture, Yesterday morning, we started with Ezekiel 47, this vision that Ezekiel has of the temple and the living water that was in the temple, right? He says, I saw water flowing from the side of the temple, and the water flowed out of the temple like a giant river, and it flowed out to the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea which has so much salt in it that nothing can live, right? There's no fish, there's no plants but this living, fresh water that was flowing out of God's temple down into the Dead Sea was so powerful and potent that it turned salt water fresh. And all of a sudden, this place where there was no life at all was teeming with fish and plants. And it even says people will go down and they'll start fishing businesses. There's so much fish there for trade. Uh, they will find new livelihoods. They will, the whole, not only will the sea come to life, but the people around it will come to life. And this thing that flows out of the temple will be there for everyone. And all of the trees along the side of the river, right, there will be trees that just sprout up in the desert. There's nothing out there. It's a lot of rocks and dirt. But there will be, along the river, trees sprouting up who give fruit in every month of the year. And their leaves will be for the healing of all people. So we have this image of what Jesus is telling the woman about this living water and this image from Ezekiel about the living water that gives life not just to the temple and the people there, but flows out to the creation, to the world, to the people around it. But there's something that happens along the way because that temple's gone, right? If you go out there, there's, the temple is in ruins now. I know I've asked all of you who were in my Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls class, when was the temple destroyed? 70 AD. Yeah, you're tired of answering that question, but you're good at it. <clears throat> I know I'll get a good response. Teachers and lawyers know you only ask questions that you know the person's going to give you the right answer. <clears throat> you know, in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. And so by the time we get to the book of Revelation at the very end of the Bible, the temple's already gone. It's been destroyed by the Roman Empire. And so John has another vision of heaven. God gives him a new vision and says there will be a river and there's going to be trees that grow along that river and the trees that grow up will have fruit for all seasons and the leaves of the tree will be there for the healing of all people. And John looks and sees the holy city of God, this new Jerusalem, this new heaven and a whole new earth. And where was the temple in that city? There's not one. The new vision of what heaven would be like. Now doesn't, Ezekiel saw a temple. John did not. There's not a temple anymore. But yet there's still the river and the life and the fruit and the goodness and the healing and the people are all there. So where's the temple now? If there's no temple in the vision, where does the New Testament tell us the temple would be found? In the people, Right? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, says Paul? Right? Don't you know, says Peter in the letter of 1 Peter, he says, there is a temple, but it's not made with bricks and mortar and stone. But he says, by faith, by baptism, all of us are built into the temple. And Jesus is the cornerstone. And our baptism and our faith is part of what builds us into that temple, the place where that living water wells up inside of us. Is made through baptism, the sacrament done with water, right? The water that is in us and flows out through us into the world for the healing of the earth, for the healing of others, for the healing of every nation. 
And of course, yesterday, we talked a little bit about what happens when we feel like we're running out of water, <laughs> right? Because sometimes those water reserves in us uh, dry up. We get tired. We get worn out. We have work to do. We have kids who put avocados on their heads. I'm watching you. <coughs> there are things that wind up making us run a little low on that, on that water cup. If it's work, if it's life, if it's our health, we know we have places to go. And so part of our task yesterday, I know the people online, some of you were here yesterday, Barbara and Joan Elaine, you were here. And we've got, our, we've got the well right here, right? We built a well. So you can see the cardboard well. It's actually oh, about half my height here. Um, I didn't think it was going to look this good. <laughs> we have a lot of overachievers in the retreat crowd here. Uh, for those, I don't know how well you can see online, but they have a, a working crank mechanism for the bucket uh, to bring the bucket up and down. There we go. And what did we put in the bucket? Hearts. Yeah, we made hearts out of construction paper and cloth. And what's on the hearts? Words. Yeah, we have words for us to take. Encour good words and encouraging words. Thank you. We want to be clear about what kind of word <laughs> we get. Yeah. So when you come up for communion, we always have this opportunity. When we receive the grace of the sacrament, that's one thing some of us identified as ways that when our cup is running empty that we fill ourselves up. Some of you said we go worship, we go pray. That's one of the many things we said. But we'll have you come for uh, the grace of Holy Communion. We'll have the sacrament and as you come by, I think Lene's going to have, uh, she'll be here to help hand out some of the hearts so that each one of us has something to take home with us. So we have a word to take home that will continue to be that word that's in us, that wells up in us to help bring us that living water that keeps welling up. So we go to the well, and what do we find except for signs of God's love, the hearts? And we always have something to draw on. Because it is here that we might come to the well and find the way to renew ourselves. I find that the water that we get, the love that we get, the stuff that, the grace that we get in the sacrament, it's, it's the water that you need to prime the pump. It's not the water for drinking, in some sense, right? That if you came, I've heard of, you know, those, those old water pumps that you know, uh, for, for the well water, right? You've got to have water to prime the pump, and you need that water, that if you don't have that reserve water, you're not going to get more. If you drink that water, you're not going to get more water out of the pump. But if you take that water and pour it into the pump, and you pump, then it starts to flow up and up and will gush out, right? It's like the seed corn or the grain that you need to plant. You're, that you could go and take your seed grain, turn it into flour, and bake bread, and have bread for the moment. Or <laughs> you take that seed and you plant it. And we know, I think one of the things we're talking about is what do, what do we know, we, how do we feel when, like, if our cell phone tells us we're down at 10% or 5%, <laughs> it's real tempting to eat up that last little reserve. You got that little bit of water in you and you're just so worn out, you're going to take that last reserve and use it up. That last little bit of grain is like, oh man, I'm, I'm hungry. I, I can't wait for the grain to grow and to uh, give a whole field full later on. But we're just going to go eat the seed grain and drink the, pump, the priming water. But we have a source that is here, a word that is already in us to rely on. We have a grace and a sacrament that keeps coming back. We have a well that we can keep going to and a word that you're going to take. Uh, you all know the words because you wrote them all down, but you don't know which one you're going to get. So we'll see what word it is for you. And we'll see what word it is that God is planting in you from this retreat as we go forward. And we'll see what it is that wells up within you, that fills up the cup for you, for those around you, for the world, for the earth itself, for the healing of the nations, and for the well-being of everyone that comes to us through this blessing of the living water that is already in us as we are each individually and all together the temple which fills with water and gives life to every person and every nation through all the world. Amen. So I invite you all to stand instead of saying the words of the Nicene Creed.
Wonder, Love, and Praise, uh, number 769, has a great sung version of the creed. We have a hymn version of the creed that we can sing together. And the words are in the booklet that you all have, and the people online have it too, if they want to sing along at home. So we'll sing our creed instead of saying it. Continue with the prayers of the people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Robert, our own bishop, for Jason, our rector, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, for those who have lost their faith, that they may see the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that we may all be together freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, including Andy, Roger, Jake, Jess, Karen, Bob, Reinhardt, 
Sharon, Kate, Linda, Lisa, Judith Ann, Mary Lynn, Donnie, and Josh, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger. We also pray for those who are homebound or hospitalized or in nursing homes, including Poppy Claire, Marilyn, Barbara, Lorette, Sally, and Sue, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Amy Poisson, Rosemary Fry, Jane Penny, Kayla Birdall, Al Burgoyne, Stu Lewin, and Noah Curtis, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, you have created all things by the power of your word and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our, through, the Holy, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. And of course, we extend that peace to those who are online with us. Hi. Great, David's gonna spin around the camera to show you some extra peace. <laughs> All right, the girls do not disappoint us at any moment. <laughs> All right. Well, as we continue with our prayers at Holy Communion, we're gonna have a hymn to sing uh, come thou fount of every blessing uh, from our hymnal. Uh, the words are here in the in the booklet you've got. Um, I do want to say I'm very grateful for uh, Dave Greiner uh, being our altar guild today who brought our all of our altar supplies from St. Matthew's uh, so that we could have communion. Uh, he and I talked a lot this week about how best to do communion here and also at St. Matthew's. Uh, at the church building, right? So uh, how would we make sure we had enough bread, enough wine, and all of that? Uh, so today, um, we decided to let the people at St. Matthew's have the trays with the communion cups. Uh, we kept trying to figure out, do we need two trays here, two trays there, one tray there, three here? We just said, forget it. Uh, we will only have the consecrated bread this morning as we have done before. So as you come forward, we'll ask people to find a way to file up. I'll stand here to give communion. And Lene, you'll be over here. Um, we will scoot this out of the way a little bit uh, to make some room. And uh, Lene will be here with hearts uh, from the well to pass out. So you can come through and pass along this way and make your way. And Brian's going to move a chair uh, because he's a good guy. <coughs> oh. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. The fount of every blessing. Tongues up on, raise the mount, fix me on it. Not of God's unchanging love, or to I, my help I've come. <coughs> Thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to the Lord, I feel it prone to leave the God I love. My heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. We'll continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made a covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave your co us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, the prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so we join the saints and angels in proclaiming your glory as we sing. Blessed in your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to new life. 
presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him to your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made with us one new, a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. And so, Father, we bring to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son. By the means of this holy bread and cup, we show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us in this holy communion in one body in your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us a living sacrifice of praise. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. As we prepare to receive communion here in the retreat house, we uh, certainly join our prayers with those who are worshiping with us online as we say together, loving God, we thank you of your presence in this Eucharist and wherever I may be today. Grant that I may always know the sacred and abiding experience of your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 <laughs> The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Eat this bread. Let us pray. Let's pray for the table. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, and renewed who may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I Quickly, before we conclude the worship and move on with the rest of our morning, because we do have coffee hour, and then lunch at 12.30 if you want to stick around for lunch. Uh, I want to first of all give some gratitude to Josh, who's over here. He's not visible on the screen for those who are at home, but thank you, Josh, for coming out to be here for our music today. It was beautiful on the grand piano in this lovely room, uh, a wonderful place to uh, worship God this morning. Uh, I also want to give my gratitude to everybody who came here and participated and engaged for our, as Lauren is training me, our first annual <laughs> parish retreat. Um, in that vein, yeah, thank you all, because you all came out uh, there was a lot of sight unseen, and you all bought in, and I'm really appreciative for that. Uh, now you can be like the woman at the well who goes back to town and tells everybody uh, how you met God here. So they'll want to come next year. Uh, I do thank you uh, for all the times you asked me, what's next or where are we going? And my answer was, I don't know. Uh, so thank you for your patience. That's a spiritual gift on its own. Um, out uh, as you are leaving, bringing your books back, you'll see there's a Girl Scout Thin Mints box over there. The last page of your booklet is an evaluation that has a little mark on a scale of one to five, some of the different aspects of what we've done and some space to leave notes. There's pens over there if you need a pen. Um, let us know. Lauren and I will take those if there's things that uh, you wanted to do more of. There's things you wanted to do less of, uh, 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 things that you want changed. 
I don't think we can change the food portions, but uh, <laughs> that's pretty set. But uh, please drop those in the Girl Scout Thin Mints box, and we'll, we'll read those later on as we try to plan for next year. <clears throat> Yes, yes. So we'll, yeah, we will, we're definitely bringing this, the well back. We have lots of hearts to give out because the living water overflows and it's going to be a river for everybody. Uh, so <laughs> it'll go far beyond uh, this room. And one last piece of gratitude uh, I want to make an announcement about is for Lauren. Can we give her some applause, please? Um, she did so much work to... There we go. Thank you. Yeah. She put in a lot of time coming up here to look at the site beforehand, dealing, dealing with the retreat center to get prices and figuring out meals and rooms and all of that, um, as well as, I think, pitching the idea to the fellowship committee in the first place. So uh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you to everybody on fellowship who is bringing the copious food that we have uh, to keep enjoying as well. Uh, and because this was such a, a wonderful time, uh, we're coming to the end uh, uh, where we're packing up our bags to go. Our final hymn is 752 in our green hymnal. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. <laughs> There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. For these blessings we live hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we been revived shall leave this place blessings you cannot receive till you know him in his fullness and believe you're the one to prophet when you say I am going to walk with Jesus all the way sweet Holy Spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. He saved you from your sin. Now you're weak, you're bound and cannot enter in. Right, if you will yield, you'll enjoy the Holy Spirit that we feel. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us. Filling us for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. We know that we have been revived when 
we shall leave this place. So I took a peek at my heart word, which is perceptiveness, which will tell you that I forgot to say two thank yous. <laughs> perceptiveness is what I need to take with me. Thank you to uh, Erica, Kiva, Ava, Grace, and Lydia for their readings and their eager participation in leading our worship the whole weekend. And I know all of the people online appreciate and give thanks for David Betts, who is sitting right here running. There, is a, <laughs> there are wires and cables you cannot believe until the Zoom has entered in. Uh, we are so grateful to have this whole tech set up. So thank you, David, for bringing it all the way out here so everyone can participate. And thank you all online. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, uh, online people. Um, would you like to have virtual coffee hour now? Okay, as soon as Josh is done playing, I'm going to make Bonnie, I guess, the uh, host, and then you can stay on and as long as you want. Thanks, David, if you can still hear us. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Barbara. Hi there, Bonnie. Good to see you. This is a beautiful sunny day for everyone. And yes. I loved your comment. Oh, yes, I so is. agreed with the God's rays of love coming down on that. Yes. I actually took three pictures to send to Jason. <laughs> it was so surreal. Oh, wait, that's good. Yes, oh, I know. Beautiful, wasn't it? It's was like an extra spot. blessing. Yeah. And I also love Barbara in her bathrobe with her I, earrings on. I know. I texted <laughs> Joan. And I said, Joan, see, Barbara's got her bathrobe on, but she just put her earrings on. No, not earrings. My 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 hearing aids. Oh. No, not earrings. Hearing aids I was doing. Barbara, so I could hear you better. Can you call them earring aids instead? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I could hear better if I put them in and try to hear. Don't need earrings, Sam. You look lovely. Oh, 